Hello, I'm going to show you how to use the Ucanic scanner to check if your OBD2 port is functional. With a Ucanic scanner, we've had a few different versions. The, the adapter with the LED light inside is one that is able to check. So if you have a previous version that doesn't have LED light, even if your scanner shows the option here for pin detection, uh, it just it doesn't because it's not going to work because this is uh, the hardware that uh, is able to check if the OBD2 port is functioning properly. So we're going to look at a case here where the OBD2 port is working. It is on a Mercedes, but the uh, procedure is the same for other models. So I'm going to plug this into the OBD2 port. Now let's see if I can do this without even looking down there. And look at that right in there. All right. So on the home screen, what you want to do is you want to swipe to the right, go to tools menu, go to pin detection, and uh, you can see a few things here. Well, uh, what's important to realize is that your OBD2 port has all these pins, but they're not all connected. Like on the back, on the car, they don't all have wires going through them. Uh, there's a few different protocols that different makes use to communicate. But what's important is a couple of things. One is the ground lines. So you have two grounds, four and five are grounds. That's pretty common. This is gonna be kind of the case in everything. You can use a multimeter to verify those to make sure that they are connected to ground. Sometimes like if those two wires are damaged, you're gonna get no communication with the car. Another one that's important is the um, battery voltage. Uh, here is 14.5 volt on pin 16. So that's another one. Um, so what I would recommend is looking up your own make and model and see which pins should have power. Sometimes you have a couple of pins that should have positive. One might be connected straight to the battery. The one, the other positive uh, should be coming from the engine control unit. So, and you might have power on one, but not in the other. So it's important that you don't get communication. So verify that. Verify your grounds. Verify which pins should have, you know, the positive here is the 16. But what's the next thing you need to check is the can line. You can see here on the top left it says can line is 6 and 14. So 6 and 14, you know, the can high and can low. So those two is really what your communication goes through. Um, a while ago I had a Mercedes that actually was not getting um, positive at all uh, it was the line that's supposed to be coming from the battery the direct 12 volt line it was completely dead so I just instead of going through and trying to replace the the whole wire hardness on the car I backfed that uh, 12 so what that did is uh, allow the scanner to power up and communicate and then the communication is done through these scan lines and that worked. Now you have to be careful if you do something like that. Um, and you know, also if you have a car that's not communicating, um, you know, that might be the issue, but you know, it could sometimes be a, a fuse or, or something like that. A lot of times these OBD2 ports are powered by the radio fuse, the same circuit. And a lot of cars is like a strange, uh, because you don't always, they don't always have their own dedicated fuse. Uh, so, check on that make sure you check all your fuses because you never know which circuit that they put your obd2 port but you can see here we have ground we have voltage you have uh, the can lines and that's all there is these other ones are not used they just don't have any you know pins on the back any wires on the back and that's pretty common